Uh, hello folks back again got cold last night uh, it's uh, I think the 7th September we are first frost night before last now I grew up around here uh, you know, years and years ago and you could always depend on the first frost being the first week in September first week after fair week well they've changed fair week fair week is now middle of august sometime in july i think yeah so uh that doesn't work anymore but we did have our first frost the first week in september which is normal and uh got pretty cold last night got cold again in fact we turned the uh, heater on for the first time last night uh this uh, unit here usually we'll uh, got a little space here. We got a fireplace in there, electric fireplace. It looks like a fireplace. You crank it up. It's got lights flashing and flames and all that. But anyway, uh, we, t we usually turn on the fireplace, and I got a little space heater up in the uh, bathroom area, and that usually does it. But I didn't do it. Got up this morning, and. Uh, it was cold, so uh, Ma came out and turned the furnace on. That's the first time for her. She's not a furnace person, but uh, worked fine, which I'm glad didn't burn the house down. I, I turned it on the other day kind of as a test run. You, know, you never can be too sure. If you only turn a thing on once in three years, <laughs> you, know, you turn it on, boom, you know, something bad happens. Well, nothing bad happened. It worked as it should. So that's good. Uh, we're within three weeks, plus a day or two, of going back to Seagull South. And uh, this year has been perfect. Really has. It's, it's been a winter. And uh, I think I, uh, I told the guy that owns the place to uh, kind of hunt me up a uh, golf cart. I'm going to try during the winter to save my money have me a golf cart up here. <clears throat> One of the things I noticed about the folks that uh, have golf carts, now most of them are actually younger than me. There's one fellow over here. Uh, he's, he's uh, I think he may be five, six years older than me, but he walks. He's got a golf cart, but he also, you see him up walking around. But most of the people that I've seen that go to the trouble of getting a golf cart to stop walking and they get uh, more august because they're not getting the exercise uh, so this is something I gotta watch if and when I get my golf cart to, that uh, I just don't uh, sit down in that thing and uh, let it go now I do uh, I have a uh, treadmill out here in the shed behind the unit. In fact, uh, I went out today and I did uh, 30 minutes on my treadmill. I was watching uh, Pulp Fiction. Don't know if any of you have ever watched. Uh, uh, what is the guy's? I know about. Uh, well, I can't remember the star's name. It's a great movie. Convoluted. It, it goes and comes and a lot of things. If you haven't watched it, uh, get the kids out of the room because they, they cuss a lot in that sucker. But it's a good movie. Anyway, I, I was watching that while I was. Uh, doing my exercise uh, let me let me look at my old Carl fella I have met over at the uh, clinic here in Bradford he calls these my uh, cue cards you probably always know that I'm looking to see what I got and uh, I uh, I do have my cue cards So let me see what I go in here. Hmm. Said I was going to watch the Bills game. They played Washington. They got smeared. They got blasted. Now they play New England tomorrow. You probably notice I got. Let's see here. I have my Bills T-shirt on. Can you see my Bills T-shirt? Yeah. <laughs> when in Bills country, be a Bill. I am a Bill. I don't mean to get the folks down in the big star uh, upset, but uh, I'm not a big uh, Cowboys fan. 
I like my bills. And uh, the uh, thing that would make my life complete if uh, Super Bowl came along this year and the uh, Bills and the Cowboys ended up in it, which is highly improbable, but it's just suppose the Bills and the Cowboys ended up in it and the Bills just slaughtered them. My life would be complete. Remember to tell you, I mean to tell you, it would be. Hmm. Once again, I can't read my writing. <laughs> Late the game, Bill's getting creamed. That's pretty well tar for the course. Uh, yeah. Got a story here. I think I'll wait a minute. I'm going to talk a little bit about this uh, business over in Syria. Now, you folks that have watched mine, you know that I'm a I'm a liberal. I'm a Democrat. Uh, uh, in some circles, I'm considered socialist. But I think that uh, my man Obama is making a mistake by trying to uh, get the United States to militarily strike against uh, Syria. Uh, I think we've messed around enough in the Middle East. I mean, uh, they're crying and uh, bellering about the uh, Syrian Jews and gas. I don't know if anybody, uh, and you know, we're complaining about them using gas, getting all self-righteous and pompous, but uh, back during uh, Ronnie Reagan's administration, uh, there was a war there in the Middle East between Iraq and Iran, and uh, at that particular juncture, we were pals with Iraq. Of course, Iran in uh, what, 79, they uh, overran the embassy there and took a hundred and some prisoners and kept them for 400 days and uh, needless to say we were ticked off at the Iranians so oh Saddam there he uh, he went to war with them and uh, we thought that was just fine everything was cool well there was a period of time there where evidently Saddam had uh, I don't think the guy was a great military genius anyway but he he had allowed a big hole to be in his line someplace and we saw it with our trusty little uh, sass, you know, look down satellites we saw this so we told him we said man you know you're you're in bad danger of getting your ass kicked uh, they're, they're gonna come through that hole so what did he do he rolled out the gas and he gassed those Iranians under those circumstances we didn't say a word they were just fine you know, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. Gonna, uh, your, your man's going to lose the war. He used a little gas. Hey, okay, all's cool. But now we got a different set of situation or circumstances over there. And uh, the guy we don't like, he's using gas. So all of a sudden now we're self-righteous and, oh, dear, you know, we can't allow this. So we need to quit being hypocrites and just keep our nose out. Last man standing over there is the winner. And uh, besides that, it appears that the, in the rebels that are trying to overthrow the dictator there in Syria, the strongest group in those rebels is Al Qaeda. <laughs> now, do we really want Al Qaeda to take over Syria? I don't think so. so I think uh, my man Obama probably we'll lose the uh, vote in Congress and I don't think the American people I heard it was 60-40 against I'm part of the 60 that's against uh, militarily intervening over there and if the guy uses gas I guess he uses gas you know I mean it's it's, it's inhuman and all that stuff but uh, in my mind's eye it's none of our business so anyway that's that we need to, we need to stay out of that Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, fast food workers are out on strike, wanting wanting an increase in pay, and I'm sympathetic. 
for those of you that uh, have watched uh, my tapes, you know that uh, when I was in the post office, I was a, uh, I was, I was a steward. I was the uh, president of my local. I was uh, executive vice president, educational uh, director of the state of Texas. Uh, I was uh, fairly up the ladder in the labor movement. So uh, usually, I'm just. You got some folks out there striking for regular, better wages and benefits. I'm for them. But <laughs> the McDonald's guys and the, I don't know how many of them are involved. Uh, fast food. I, I think Wendy's, McDonald's, and somebody correct me if I get some of these wrong. But anyway, they're out on the street with their billboards. They want a 100% they want increase in their wages. That'd be nice. I'd like to have a 100% increase in my retirement. That'd be great. But even McDonald's, big company, I mean, world's biggest food dispenser. I don't think there's anybody out there that puts more food on the table than McDonald's. They can't afford a 100% increase in the wages. I mean, a Big Mac costs $9.80. Uh, these guys need to, uh, you know, get their uh, head out of their, uh, I mean, anybody with like a sense going to know that uh, you cannot increase your wages 100%. It won't work. Uh, I'm not sure right now that uh, they're still out there picketing. They were a week or so back when I made my list here, but uh, that was my position that uh, you, you would break even McDonald's. Uh, you 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 put a hundred percent increase on the wage scale of uh, any any company company go belly up. So I'm sympathetic. Maybe a dollar an hour raise to start with. Maybe start uh, having a pay scale to where if you're there five years, you know you're twelve fifty or something like that. That's that's prudent. But just get out and all of a sudden decide you want to double tomorrow. That's ignorance and. Uh, Somebody needs to tell these guys so. Well, the media is following them. I, they haven't said whether they were uh, uh, for it or against it. Just, they were just giving the news. But uh, it's, it's stupid. Anyway, let's see what else we got here. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I always tell a story, and I'm trying to keep this relatively short. I am outdoors, and it's cloudy, and it's kind of cold. No wind. I'm glad of that, or I wouldn't be sitting here. But uh, I worked for the. Uh, I got two stories. I'll tell the one about me getting rolled in Mexico. When I first came to Texas in 1961. Uh, stationed in Abilene, Texas. Buckle the Bible Belt. Uh, but Abilene, Texas, uh, in those days, and I have to assume still is, is a fairly boring town. It's 100,000 people, but uh, ain't much going on in Abilene. Not for a young 22 year old, you know, uh, hormones flowing, you know. So, uh, what we used to do, we would uh, we'd load up. And uh, we'd go to a place called uh, Del Rio, Texas. And right across the uh, river from Del Rio was a place called Viacuña. And of course, in Viacuña, uh, you could uh, get your hormones taken care of, you know, and uh, just have a good time. It was an open town. We'd go down, I don't know, maybe twice a year, save our money and go down there and get crazy. So uh, this one weekend, I remember I had that Volvo up here. Remember uh, the Volvo I went to Anson in, got stopped by the cops. I had it, and I think I charged uh, five bucks a head, which in those days was pretty good money to go uh, to go to Via Cunha. And I put uh, five people in it, including myself, and off we go and we get down there. I remember. When you get in Old Mexico in those days, I don't, don't think it's that way anymore. I don't, I don't go to Old Mexico anymore. I mean, with the uh, cartels and everything, you're cutting people's heads off. I mean, it doesn't pay to get down there. But in those days, you get on, you cross the border, you go over to Bo Boys Town, and there'd be a bunch of kids standing around. 
and you can give the kid a dollar. No, you give him 50 cents and tell them to watch the car until you come back. They'd stay there. If you're going to be there for, say, 12, 14 hours, they'd stay right by the car. Nobody jacked with your car. And I say I'd give the kid a dollar, big spender. Went up into the cantinas, did my thing, you know. Got pretty well plowed. And uh, the night went along, and we partied with the... Uh, the girls and uh, came to be about oh I'd say two three in the morning and I'd been partying heavy and other things hey there's a siren going off must be a fire downtown anyway I'd been partying heavy and I was pretty well blitzed and I was thinking about going back to the car and getting in it you know heading back north and this little blonde looking, <laughs> Norwegian looking, now she was Mexican, but she, I mean, she looked like she was from Stronheim or something. And I thought, well, I said, by golly, I got to, uh, I got to check this out. So, you know, I introduced myself, you know, we <laughs> did a little bartering. Anyway, one thing led to another, and I, I was up in her apartment drunk as Hogan's goat boy I mean just out and I recall I don't remember a heck of a lot but I remember I was laying down and I turned my head sideways and she was rolling my clothes up and putting them on a chair that was it after that I don't remember nothing well time passes I wake up sun shining in my eyes there's rocks in my back and I look around and I'm, and I'm on this hillside <laughs> a little darling had uh, rolled me see they did they put my clothes back on me took me up above the uh, cantinas of Boys Town and laid me out on the ground up there and just left me there today in today's world, I'd be dead. But in those days, evidently, they didn't want to mess up their business image. So, you know, that, that was their way to take care of something. Anyway, I'm laying up there in this rock pile, looking around. I remember there were some kids over here. Some of them were naked, you know, just little kids. So I set up. When I look down the hill, and I can see the roofs of the cantinas down there. <laughs> I'm going... What is going on? What has happened to me? Well, nothing had happened. I had just passed out. I had drank myself into a stupor. So, I get up, I wander down into the cantinas, and I uh, ran into a friend of mine. Petraska was his name. can't remember his first name. And we're sitting there, and I just had this gal come around with a... Uh, Cigarette thing, you know, cigarettes, cigars, cigarettes, and tray she had slung around her neck. Uh, give me some cigarettes. Pell mell, I remember I smoked. So I reached in my pocket, and that's when I discovered that I didn't have anything. I mean, they had kept everything. Except they didn't keep my wallet, they just all the money. So, I'm broke. I don't even have money enough to get back across the bridge. You know, I think it got 50 cents to. Uh, pay the fee to get back into the United States you did not have it Petraska was in the same shape broke as Hogan's go and uh, just bad stuff I don't tell you old Mexico is no place you want to be with no money and no nothing but my car was still where it was at the kid was still there and the car ran and of course we'd get up the border couldn't get across so uh, we went through those cantinas and luck would have it, there was somebody, I don't remember who, there was somebody there that had five, six bucks left. And five, six bucks at that time would, you know, I'd put gas in the car, that would get us across the border and get us back to Abilene. And I remember, we got loaded him up, we got to the bridge, paid her money, we got back into the United States. I stopped the car, I got out, and I kissed the ground.
sounds like, it sounds like you know hokey like I know what he does I did boy I mean to tell you I thought I was you know I thought I was stuck in old Mexico anyway that's the story of me getting rolled in old Mexico didn't roll me hard didn't hurt me just I just conveniently was so drunk that I passed out and I of course I didn't get to have my way with that good uh, Nordic-looking little girl, but I guess that's you know <laughs> you, uh, you get what's coming to you. I evidently got what was coming to me. I uh, I got all my money taken, and uh, but I did get back in the United States, and I did get back home, and boy, I was thrilled. So. That's the story of me and my uh, role. Let me get out of here. Oh, I got the long shark thing. Where you done that? I could tell you about uh, Connie Walters. I've got a couple of more. I think I'll let them go. It's been a beautiful day. I watched Ike the other night. He said he'd. Uh, he's, he's growing a beard. Good stuff, man. Beards are good. I'd say the women will start chasing you, but you're a married man. Anywho, we're uh, within almost two weeks and just a little bit of uh, being back, uh, back Seagull North. I want to say I'm looking forward to it, but then in another vein, you know, uh, this has been so good down here. And we're coming, I think next year we're going to come back and spend. Uh, about four and a half months we're going to uh, put in a little more time down here anyway thank you to all my friends out there those that watch no more than I've been doing these lately I'm surprised anybody does but uh, we do it say hi to all my friends Brian oh by the way uh, any of you guys Brian any of you guys that watch this if you don't know it uh, Goldie had a heart attack. Don't know a few days ago. He's in the hospital down there in Waco. So uh, check on him. Talked to uh, old Bill Peacock last night. He seems to be coming along. Uh, I guess I'll uh, shut this thing down. I've probably done enough prattling. I'm, I'm kind of rambling. So Brian or Cooter, top of the day to you, Crystal. Save me a chair. I'm gonna be up there. Uh, pretty soon, Carl and Kyle. Kyle kind of wondering where you're at. Are you going to be uh, at uh, Seagull South when we get there? i having trouble keeping track of you. Tracy, once again, I know you're seeing the pictures. Heights and Rager. Uh, glad you like the pictures of that desk. I've got some place at home, I've got some prints that I made of that uh, printing press that uh, you, you did like to see that thing uh, go in that uh, museum. Ike, let your hair grow, guy. Glenn, Daryl Mackey. I haven't checked with David lately. I don't know whether uh, how he's doing. I need to get over there. Tyler, Jim Kersey. Sounds to me like uh, you're back on your feet there, Jim. I had heard that uh, you were uh, a little spooked about your health, but uh, what I uh, see on Facebook and uh, what I've observed, it uh, sounds like you're doing all right, so I'm glad. Uh, my other buddy in Raleigh, Durham, I'm going to call you tomorrow. I'm, uh, I'm glad that uh, they got that thing in remission. I figured you were tough enough to uh, pull it all by yourself, but a little drugs are always good. Anywho, y'all have a fine one. And uh, I will try to do this next week and not be so, what's the word I'm looking for? Anyway, do it more often. There's my buddy.